BioBalance HealthCast episode 247, Healthy Selfish. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. One of the things that I talk about a lot in my business as a counselor is that language matters. The script that you hear in your head that guides your choice making and your priorities Mm -hmm. uh, is important. And and a lot of times what I have found is that working with people to help them improve their quality of life or their relationship skills or just their global sense of satisfaction and self-confidence involves writing a new script, having them write a new script. Mm that they can hear in their head. And so, so I have to teach them skills like thought stopping and you know when you hear guilt messages mm-hmm. that just eat at you and eat at you, uh, woulda, coulda, shoulda kinds mm-hmm. of things. Uh, and reframing, mm-hmm. you, you reframe the, if you reframe the language, you reframe the message. Mm-hmm. And so we were discussing that and you started recognizing the points that I was making and said that there were an awful lot of women that came to see you that seemed to be struggling with similar concerns. And in our conversation, we kept sticking on a couple of words. And, mm-hmm. and one was the, the concept healthy, selfish, and the other was the concept selfless. Yes. And so we mm-hmm. thought today we would talk about those two concepts as we've experienced them in a medical capacity, trying to help people whose lives are uh, in difficulty or pain mm-hmm. or struggling for, for physiological reasons or emotional reasons, uh, because it really does matter. I find that with women, mm-hmm. We, thought we are taught, trained, that being selfless mm-hmm. is a, an absolute goal. Being selfless is where we should be, and being selfish is something we should never do. It's almost like being selfish is a sin or a crime. Right. It's a wrong almost. It is almost mm-hmm. a sin, and, and, in America at least. I don't think that this is all over the world. Many of us are acculturated with that message aggressively driven home. You're nothing special. You're one of the crowd. You shouldn't take the turn or always choose the choice or dominate others. Shouldn't. You should so, not. Or, so we talk or about for, shoulds. Or for women, mm-hmm. we should never let our husbands make dinner. We should always make dinner. Now, a lot of these shoulds come with a cost. And the cost is, if we don't do that, if we can't do that, if we're working just as hard as our husbands and making just as much money, or even if we're not, we're working as hard, we still have to do all of these things Mm -hmm. because Because in our brain, we're saying, we are hearing our mother's voice. You should always make dinner. You should always do the dishes after dinner. Don't wait, wait till the next day. You should always make your bed. Not, your husband shouldn't make the bed you should make the bed you shouldn't make it together you should always have you should always do it for him because that's part of being a wife right and so these are the so those are called things. sex role stereotyping that's and right. there are messages that we deliver to our children through our own direct intervention you know little boys don't cry my dad used to say to me if you need something to cry about i'll give you something to cry right. about right. I mean, my mom used to say suck it up nobody likes a cry baby and they wouldn't say those things to girls, right? Because yeah. because we were we were trained that way ourselves. And mm-hmm. sometimes things would come out of my mouth when I was talking to my daughter, and I go, "Whoa, wait a minute! <laughs> I didn't really mean that. That's something that I learned from my mother, but it doesn't necessarily apply to you. Yeah, doesn't it apply to a young woman who's a professional who has a husband who's a professional? Duties need to be shared. Right. I shouldn't say, "Oh, well, you should always do this." The culture is evolving, and thank God that it is. Yeah. I mean, my dead father, who never met my youngest son, occasionally speaks to him directly from my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I reflexively open my yeah. mouth and say something that, that I heard from him that if I stop and think about I don't believe. I don't and you don't, think, yeah, but, you don't believe it, you don't but mean the it. The messages are there. So, so we were looking at that, and we want to promote for you the concept of healthy selfish. Selfish is not always a negative, selfish is sometimes a necessary. And we're going to talk about seven skills that you need to develop if you want to move to the capacity of becoming healthy, healthy, selfish. Talk about why selfishness is important. And that is that selfishness means you are putting up a boundary. Mm -hmm. You're saying, I need this time. I need this 
money I need is at the beginning of selfishness. I need, I want. But it is maintaining yourself, mm -hmm. maintaining your health, maintaining your beauty, maintaining your self-confidence, maintaining your uh, your energy because too many shoulds make us exhausted. Oh yeah. And I see this when I give patients hormones. They're exhausted so they've stopped doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So then I give them the hormones, they have all this energy and then they go back to all the shoulds. Yeah. And they don't spend, they don't feel any better sometimes with their energy because they just took up, you know, like 10 other jobs. Different day, same stuff. Right. And I keep saying, don't add to your jobs because you feel better. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of, that's the problem. Well, And so we're going to give you some tools, or Brett is, because I'm still learning them. The message of self-care is a really, really critically important message. And actually, one of my favorite examples of this is, is the airlines. You know, when you get on an airplane going anywhere, and they give a little spiel from the stewardesses about safety on the plane, mm -hmm. one of the things they always say is if you're traveling with elderly people or young children, people that have any kind of infirmity, if for some reason the oxygen masks come down, mm -hmm. put yours on first. Because if you don't mm -hmm. put yours on first and take care of your ability to function, then you're not going to be able to take care of those people. So okay. if you try to put masks on your little children first to make sure they're okay, the, lo the anoxia, the loss of oxygen, is likely to incapacitate you so that neither one of you survive. Because they can't really take, they're not old enough to take care of you. So, right. so that's the idea. We have to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of our families, our jobs, our husbands, our, you know, all our friends, mm -hmm. so that we can provide ourselves with the meaning to life. So, so when you are lost in the, me the message of selflessness, as part of your sex role stereotype, you are always the last in line. You know, if there are four pieces of pie and five people at the table, you're the one that doesn't get a piece of pie because and that's probably good for you know, both all is, of us. <laughs> well, it may well be, <laughs> but but the message that women are taught is the men deserve. I mean, I remember growing, there was a hierarchy in our house because we were poor, and if there was one piece of pie, Dad got it, mm -hmm. not the kids. Right. Well, when I raised my children, if there was one piece of pie, I'd give it to the kid because. I felt badly about taking it for myself. And they that probably could burn it self -ish. off. Selfish. I wasn't thinking about it that way. And I wasn't thinking about anything except that the right choice here to make is to sacrifice for the child. And we came to this, I mean, you have to think about our culture and where we came from because right. the cultures that my mother was Lithuanian and came from a pure Lithuanian line, and the her parents were immigrants. Yeah. So my grandparents. Right. And so they would... All the adults ate at the table first. Right. They ate everything that you could possibly eat, and children were like dogs. Whatever was left, they got. the children got. Yeah. And so the children were this big. The, the adults were this big. They right. didn't need it. They ate what they wanted. If right. something was left over, that's what the kids got. So we're kind of responding to that. Right. That the, and that's not all immigrants. It was their culture, but many of the cultures did that, where adults are everything, children mm -hmm. are nothing. Mm -hmm. So we're responding to that by going, oh. Children are everything. We are nothing as as parents. I remember working with my child on the concept that you know you have to be aware and you're not always first. When we walk up to a grocery store, if somebody's coming out, step aside and let them come out, mm -hmm. especially if they're elderly. Uh, when a grown up comes in the room, stand up and acknowledge them. It's a courtesy. Mm -hmm. And if they need a place to sit, give them a place to mm -hmm. sit. And, and if somebody's left without, mm -hmm. that's you, the child. <laughs> Because that's how I grew up, mm -hmm. and I still value that. So the, part of what we're talking about here is a balancing message. Because if you don't serve in some ways, you're going to feel empty and inadequate. Because you, you mm -hmm. want to be of service, and you mm -hmm. want to make things work. But you don't want to be of service to the point that you lose your sense right. of self. Because if you do, you're going to develop emotional problems and physiological problems. The, we, we, as we began to discuss this, we were talking about what are the presenting symptoms that people come in with. And we start to look at and we discover underneath it is uh, they, they've lost their sense of self. They've fallen into codependency or sexual stereotyping to the point that their survival is all about taking care of others. If mm -hmm. I can make everybody else okay, then I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever that leads for me. So we see them come in uh, with codependency issues, with depression, with anxiety, mm -hmm. with guilt, sometimes with suicidality, almost always with obesity, uh, mm -hmm. denial. Those are presenting 
manifestations that we then have to find out what are the medical components, do they need medicine for that, what are the behavioral components, and ultimately what are the script changes that, that need to occur. Our self is kind of like a balloon. If we squeeze it in one place, it's going to come out someplace else. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we, if we don't acknowledge right. our own needs, then we have these outcomes right. because it's got to go somewhere. Or sometimes it's anger as well, but usually with women it's more of a guilt thing. But we ha it has to go somewhere. So that's what we're trying to help you. Where when you have it somewhere else, you need to shift it back to you, and not feel and not have the secondary problems like guilt and anger, guilt and, and shame, and codependency and rage that mm -hmm. gets sublimated and comes out in other places because you you can't acknowledge that you're angry that you didn't get a turn or that nobody attends to you or takes care of you. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a lady Sunday that was saying to me, I am fantasizing about this, this professional that I hire, this trainer, mm -hmm. uh, who's half my age, because he pays attention to me and he strokes my ego mm -hmm. and he tells me I'm doing well and he notices if my hair is different or whatever. And she said, I'm really upset with myself that I've given him so much power mm -hmm. over my okayness. And if he doesn't say these kind of things to me, then I spend the, the, the week devastated. And so we were talking that's a, about... That's not an uncommon thing. It's not an uncommon thing. And, and so wh what do you do to get better? And one of the things that you get better is you change your script. Changing the script is critical. So you have to learn the, the power of I and the okayness of I. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn how to say, I want, I need. And it's mm -hmm. really hard to do. And there are some tricks that are involved in doing that. So when, when you're talking to yourself, uh, we we were talking about the, the this one and the next one, which is uh, the, the second one, which is uh, give yourself uh, permission to choose yourself and not the other. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to say to you, I want to go to Chicago and you don't want to go to Chicago or you want to go to San Francisco, mm -hmm then we have to find a way to resolve that. If you're going to have balance mm -hmm. in a relationship, I can't dominate and get my way all the time, and I can't surrender and let you have your way all the time. Mm -hmm. Another example that commonly comes up is, is choosing entertainment. Let's mm -hmm. go to the movie. Okay, fine. What movie do you want to go see? Well, I want to go see Rambo. Oh, my God, I hate Rambo. I want to go see Sleepless in Seattle. Mm -hmm. I hate chick flicks. Who's going to win? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be win-lose, or can we negotiate a win-win? A compromise. A healthy compromise would be some people win sometimes and the other person wins sometimes. Exactly. And, or you choose to do things on your own yeah. by yourself. Yeah. Let's go to the multiplex and you see yeah. that and I'll see this and we'll meet afterwards and go get dinner. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are ways to solve the problem, mm -hmm. but people have to give themselves permission to say, this is a problem that needs to be solved, to but recognize. If, if I always go, okay, I'll see the movie yes, that dear. you want to see, mm -hmm. and then I'm always watching World War II Hitler movies, which right. would be my husband's choice. The History Channel. History <laughs> Channel. Then, then, I'm, then I'm angry guilty it comes out some other way right. I laugh you start out some sniping other way. you're passive aggressive right. you know you, you spit in his soup or something and <laughs> I don't and you do, feel better no I wouldn't say <laughs> I do that but but now there's been enough discussion where I say you know you watch the game until blank that's right. fine with me I'm gonna work or I'm gonna read or I'm gonna right. do something else and when that's over or when you choose that it's you know what's gonna happen then but, we're gonna move to something else that I want to see but Kathy when it's healthy selfish and you do that, mm -hmm. you do it without resentment, without anger. Right. There's not a price to be paid later. <laughs> you know, I'll watch the movie with you or the ball game with you until 2 o'clock. And in return, then you go for a walk with me afterwards. Mm -hmm. And and so if afterwards he's complaining or fussing or dragging <laughs> or, his you know, or just feet. just forgets that he's supposed to go for, I don't Yeah, <laughs> forgets he was supposed to go. Then, then there's anger and resentment, mm -hmm. which comes back then to the ability to verbalize and say, I want I need, mm -hmm. and, that's and I have. So hard, and it's so hard because there's guilt with that. Saying to someone that you live with or a good friend, I want, I need, yeah. is 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 imperative, but it's so it's painful because it's because you may have them reject you. Yeah, and that's the fear of rejection. The, the codependence, codependency is not a technical psychological term, but it's a term that's in the vernacular. Mm -hmm. A lot of books out about codependency mm -hmm. and are you codependent? I hear people use that word all the time. The concepts of codependency, as I understand it, rest on two fundamental principles. Mm -hmm. One is that I get my sense of okayness about who I am and my worth and value from somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I find somebody to invest in. 
to help the, and the unwritten to deal support is to they do will everything they tell don't me do. That I'm okay because I don't mm-hmm. feel okay internally. If, I, if I'm a servant, then right. I feel okay. And and the other thing is fear of abandonment. Mm-hmm. And so I fear abandonment. I'm going to find a relationship that I expect you will promise you will never leave me no matter what you discover about me. Mm-hmm. And then I constantly work to please you and get your approval and get your strokes. That the sad part of that is it never works. Mm-hmm. And codependence. Well, the, the it world. works. It happens for lifetimes, oh, but it doesn't make both people happy real people or healthy. Because one person's taking all the hits, the other person's escaping all of it. Right. There's anger. There may be guilt on the other side or no guilt. Uh, but it's such an uneven relationship that you can tell it when you walk in somebody's house. You know, they're like, rah, rah, rah. I mean, my Cut you know, like my parents did that. Yeah. You know, and it was like, oh, yeah. just I don't even want to go there. I don't want to walk in and feel this. Well, Nancy Friday wrote a book years ago called "Why Do I Feel Guilty When I Say No." And we were talking and preparing for this podcast about the importance of learning to say no. Mm -hmm. And just no. Mm -hmm. Not no because, no but, no and. Mm -hmm. Just say no. Nancy Nancy Reagan had it right. Not about drugs, but about the language. Uh, Sometimes you have to learn how to say no. And the the trick is how to say no. And I've had conversations with you about this because you struggle with this issue. You want to say no because or no because. But and then mm-hmm. give people explanations mm-hmm. and reasons. Like if I just give my, my reasons to you, then you will understand and it'll be okay with you. But and, it's not. But it's not. <laughs> if you say no, it's either okay or not okay with somebody. And and so one of the in counseling, one of the things that I've worked with people on is learning uh, that they give too much information. Mm-hmm. So when you say to me, uh, we need to have a family reunion and we're going to have it at your house because your house is the biggest and most centrally located. So we're all coming there. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to do that because mm-hmm. I know it's going to cost me more money or it's going to take more effort and stress or it's not a fair division of labor. You know, all the other family members live outside of town. Mm-hmm. Mom's getting old and in the home and I'm the one that has to take care of her. But everybody else has an opinion. And they call and say, well, you need to do this, and you should have done that, and why don't you take mom to this? And, and I'm like, you know, why don't you fly into town and take care of that yourself? Oh, well, but you live right. there. Well, right. you know, you're a child in the family, too. Why do I have this responsibility? Well, And I tell I have that conversation with my patients all the time. And Absolutely. Say, you're the only person taking care of your parent. Yeah. That means you have the power of deciding what you're going to do. Now, if they call you and tell you they want this or they want that or they want to take this of moms or that of moms, you know, you have the power to say no. Right. Because you're the one doing all the work. The one that's doing all the work should have the ability to. You have, you have the power if you care. can give yourself permission. Right. But I, t- I give no them permission. And not feel. No, you give yourself permission. Okay. Well, I give them the permission to have to say to say. It's okay to say no. Oh, oh, yeah. You're t- I'm giving your patients, them, right. my okay. patients, yeah. permission. I, I lost the example. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm giving pa- my patients permission. Yes, absolutely. To say no to their siblings and just carry on. But they have to be able to do it without anger and guilt. Right. If I say no, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. I'm going to do what I'm on the ground here seeing and taking mm-hmm. care of. Uh, then you have to be okay with that. You can't be resentful. Mm-hmm. You can't feel chastised. You can't feel guilty. And and that's really hard. People have to work their mm-hmm. way through the ability to do that. One of the skills, one of the phrases that I teach people to say is, that doesn't work for me. And then shut up. <laughs> Don't explain why it doesn't work mm-hmm. for you. Don't ask you can for say permission in your head, for but... not to work for you. <laughs> Just say, I'm sorry, that doesn't work for me. And be quiet. And, and so they're going to fly cast all around you. The hooks are going to hit the water. Mm-hmm. You don't have to snap at the hook. Mm-hmm. You just sit there calmly. You've already said, doesn't work for me. So we're going to have the family reunion at your house on the 15th of July. Well, that doesn't work for me. And then be quiet. What are they going to do? They can, they're going to argue again. They're going to keep arguing, and then you have to use the broken record. That doesn't work broken for me. Broken record. That's that doesn't next work step. for me. Use the broken that record. That doesn't work for me. And, say, and not say more stuff, which mm-hmm. is... What I tend to do. So. Yeah. Right. Well, what most of us tend to do, mm-hmm. because we've been taught that unless we can get their approval, it doesn't matter, because it's about them and not about us. Mm-hmm. But but again, the qualifier is you're not going to be happy and you're not going to be healthy unless there's balance. So there has to be some negotiation. There has to be some give and take. But it has to start from the premise that it's okay for you to say no. It's okay for you to say I. It's okay for you to say I want. And you have to dump the guilt. 
Guilt mm-hmm. is a message that is an attempt by people in your life or society to control your options. That's and right. they use the lever of guilt. If I can make you feel guilty, then I can control what you choose. Mm-hmm. And so I work with people on rejecting the concept of guilt. And some of the most successful people that you'll ever meet mm-hmm. were brought up on guilt. Now, guilt being brought up on guilt and having that as your as your motivation is not always a bad thing for society because guilt makes you do things you don't want to do, it makes you succeed, it makes you get an A, it makes you work harder. But then you are on the couch the rest of your life because <laughs> you have given up yourself. Right. Because of guilt. You have not been able to do what you wanted to do because you're guilty. Like you run your dad's company, but you never wanted to run your dad's company, but you've been guilted into it. So you don't get to satisfy your own desires. Right. We all hear should messages. Mm -hmm. You should go see grandma. She's sick and you're only in town for a few days. And yes, you want to visit all your friends, but this may be the last time you see grandma. So you should go. And if you don't go, then you feel guilty. If she mm-hmm. dies, you feel even more guilty. Mm-hmm. And people whip you with that. It's like a mm-hmm. cattle prod. You know, oh, you didn't see grandma. I can't believe she left you the car. You didn't go see her. You know, that kind of we stuff. We shouldn't make people or or <laughs> should should we shouldn't cause people to feel but by the guilty same token, you and I talk to people all the time about you should make healthy choices. You should mm-hmm. do this for the quality of your life. So we have to talk about the differences between shoulds. Mm-hmm. There are have to shoulds and choose to shoulds. Have to shoulds are shoulds that are imposed on you by other people's scripts. Choose to shoulds are the shoulds that you impose on yourself. Uh, They they come from your own sense of personal integrity. To be the person I want to be Mm -hmm. requires me to say no to Mm M&Ms. You're telling me, hey, you should say no to M&Ms. That's the external uh, power move. I'm your doctor. I don't want you to have a heart attack. You don't eat that crap. I, I can... Put that responsibility on you, mm-hmm. not make that choice myself. Mm-hmm. Then I can blame you. I can feel guilty. I can be a child mm-hmm. in the way that I respond to it. Or I can take ownership and say, I choose of my own choice for my reason to not eat those M&Ms. Mm-hmm. And the difference is in how it feels. If it's a have to should imposed on me, mm-hmm. I'm going to feel angry and resentful and mm-hmm. devious. If it's a choose to should, I'm mm-hmm. going to feel grounded and centered and strong. I'm going to mm-hmm. embrace that choice. Mm-hmm. There's still choices. There's still yeses and nos, mm-hmm. but they're they're in the service of balance. So it, it really does matter. Remember Goldilocks. Not too cold, not too hot, <laughs> just right. <laughs> That's perfect. So right. we'd like you to remember this in your daily life mm-hmm. so you can be healthier. So you cannot have your cortisol go up. And I mean, I'm doing the physical, you're doing the emotional. And be suicidal and and obese because you are repressing and and eating in your anger and your anguish about not having a sense of self. Be healthy, selfish. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BiobalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BiobalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.